More markers are coming. Thank him tonight. Go ahead. Membro Zakala da Baba. Go ahead and give him thanks. Lebro Zakala da Baba Gadabo Zokala da Brena Katina Kalida Baboro Kotuna Kalia. Engebo Jacala da Baba Gadozo Bere Katina Kalina Mamambra. Agarato Sekela de Brena Kekele de Moza Kala na Mambabro Godo Zekele de Babra. Egebo Jekele de Babro Godobo Zekele de Brena Katoli Gebara Katina Kelina Mananga La Bara Katina Kelia. Agabo Jekele de Babra Gadabo Zokolo de Bobro Godobo Zekele de Brena Ketele de Maya. Lebra Jekele de Babra Gadabo Zokolo de Boro Kotune Kelina Mamambe. Ele boja kele de babra gadabo zokolo de brena ketele ne maya angele bozeke angele ne bozeke angele ne bozeke angele ne bozeke angele ne bozeke agala de babra gadabo zekele de brena kakele de boja kaya praise you father praise you father hallelujah thank you lord jesus thank you lord jesus praise you father hallelujah praise the lord his mercy endured forever. Praise the Lord. His mercy endured forever. His mercy to save. His mercy to deliver. His mercy to preserve. His mercy to keep. His mercy to protect. Praise the Lord. His mercy endured forever. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And Father, we rejoice that tonight we have this another opportunity to fellowship in the light of your word. And we thank you, Lord, that it is the entrance of your word that giveth light. And it giveth understanding to the simple. So tonight our hearts are ready. And our minds are ready. To receive revelation knowledge. To grow in the knowledge of Christ. And I decree that your people are being equipped. An army is rising all over the face of the earth. That will make manifest the savor of God's grace in every place. In the name of Jesus. Thank you Lord that by the end of this service tonight we will all be the better for it. So we give you praise and glory and honor for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name, and every believer sees a powerful amen. 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 Lift your right hands to heaven. Let's release our feet together. As we say this word, I am born of God. I am born of the world. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the word. I do the word naturally. Therefore, today, I will understand the word of his grace. I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. In Jesus' name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Are we excited to fellowship in the light of God's word tonight? Well, if we're excited, go ahead. Give the Lord a praise. Glory. Glory. Amen. Grab your pen, your notebook, your Bible. You can be seated with your sweet smart self tonight. We want to welcome everybody connected to this service by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and, and, and all of you that are connected on all the various platforms. We love you. We're glad to have all of you in the service tonight. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, YouTube channel, Ebel Damina Ministries International. And in the course of the service, make sure you tweet along with us. And you know the, the hashtag for tweeting is MNCCM2023. So what, wherever tweets are, you know, you find tweets in the course of teaching. Make sure you tweet them. Let's get this word to the ends of the earth. Make sure you also like the videos and engage. Let me also welcome all of the radio audience in Akwa Ibom State, wherever you're hearing the sound of my voice. We love you. We're glad that you're a part of our church family. And we'd like you to help us invite friends and loved ones. Ask them to tune to this radio station right now. Life is flowing through the airwaves. We want to welcome all the citizens around the world that are connected to the service tonight, guys. We're glad to have all of you in the service. Let's go for the word tonight as we study our realities in the light of Jesus Christ. Can I have a powerful amen? All right, we're still studying the in Christ realities. It's still New Creation Camp Meeting 2023. In Christ realities. <clears throat> We've been dealing with a number of narratives here from the Old Testament and looking at them in the Pauline, Pauline theology and looking at them also in the light of what Jesus taught. The book of 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 15 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 15. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Even as our beloved brother Paul also according to the wisdom. That word wisdom is the word Sophia. That is insight. 
wisdom, insight given unto him hath written unto you. So Peter acknowledges that brother Paul has been given an insight, has been given a Sophia, a wisdom. And of course, you know that the wisdom that was given to brother Paul is as it relates with the Old Testament. There's a Sophia, an insight on how to go about, you know, interpreting the letters of Moses and the prophets in the light of Jesus Christ. Look at the next verse, verse number 16. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. So he says there are some people who wrestle with the revelation, the teachings of brother Paul, and because of their wrestling with the teachings of brother Paul, they try to reinvent the wheel and interpret the scriptures their own way. And he says those people are unstable because they are not consistent. And he says they will, they will do that wrestling to their own destruction. And that's why it's important to realize that Christianity is apostolic and historic. What has been handed down to us by the apostles of the Lamb. The apostles of the Lamb who were given the responsibility to interpret the Old Testament and bring all of it together for us in the light of Christ. But how many of you have observed that as we've been studying the last few, one, two weeks, especially the in Christ realities, the entire scriptures are tying themselves together. How many of you have observed that? Everything is coming together into one, you know, into one. You can see everything in clarity. The book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1, <clears throat> we've been looking at a number of things in the past few days. Hebrews 11 verse 1, 2 and 3. Now, faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Next verse. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Next verse. Through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Now, we began to examine Israel, the Israel, brother Paul's Israel, and what Jesus says about Israel. The first thing we saw was that you cannot even know about Israel until you know about the God of Israel. And we said the God of Israel is Yahweh and Elohim together in Christ. Yahweh and Elohim together in Christ. Or the God of Israel is Yahweh in Christ. That's the first thing we dealt with. Then we moved to look at the God of Israel who is Yahweh in Christ gives to them a law. And we saw that the law that was given to them was the law of faith in Christ. Not only the law was given to the Israelites, they were also given circumcision. And we took time to see that the circumcision that was given to this nation called Israel is the circumcision of the heart. Then we move beyond circumcision to see that this nation is distinct. This nation is unique. This nation is separate. It will be a nation as a result of the work of the spirit. That the distinguishing factor on this nation called Israel. Will be as a result of the work of the spirit. Mm -mm. Now Hebrews chapter 11 now tells us. That the elders. The elders. The Old Testament patriarchs. By faith obtained a good report. Through faith we understand. That the walls were framed by the word of God. That the things that do appear were made of things that were not seen. Which therefore means that the Old Testament will have a lot of representations. A lot of representations in the Old Testament. So we now began to see people like Abel. People like Enoch in Hebrews chapter 11. People like Noah. And then when it gets to Abraham. Because Abraham is key and fundamental to the Jews. He spends more time and more verses on Abraham. You know, he said virtually everything Abraham did was in hope. Abraham hoping against hope. So everything Abraham did was in hope. He said he left his country to a land he did not know. But of course, we all agreed yesterday that he knew where he went. But he was also looking for that place that God said, I will show unto you. So the writer of Hebrews, Peter and John, and definitely Paul, said to a land i will show you how will you go to a place i will show you well we agreed that that is a statement of the resurrection that is a statement 
of the resurrection of Jesus. A place that I will show you. So he said, well, Abraham, therefore, desired that country, a better country, whose builder and maker is God. He desired a better city. And we said the word city is the word police. Police in the Greek means a people. He looked for a people, a city. He looked for a people. Now, the writer of Hebrews built his narrative safely on Abraham by saying that Abraham sought for a heavenly, Uranus, a heavenly. So, if what he sought, if the land that Abraham was seeking for was heavenly, it's not near the country of Jordan. And we said it is not even anything close to Palestine because what he was looking for was heavenly. The writer of Hebrews says what he sought was Uranus whose builder and maker is God. Now pay attention to the narrative of the writer of Hebrews. Imagine when he got to Isaac. And I said yesterday that that one should throw you off God. He said he offered the only begotten, for he received him in a figure. So many things were figurative. The circumcision was figurative. Isaac therefore becomes a figure. Isaac. Isaac himself is a figure. Even Abraham is a figure. Please pay attention. Look at Hebrews chapter 11. <clears throat> and we see how the writer of Hebrews built his strange narrative on Abraham. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 9 to 11. Please pay attention. Hebrews 11 verse 9 to 11. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise. As in a strange country, he already sojourned in the land, the land of promise, which means he knew the place and he got there. All right. Now he sojourned in the land of promise as in a country or strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. And I told you, there is nowhere you will ever see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob dwelling together. All right? So that means there's a communication here the writer of Hebrews expects you to pay attention to. Next verse, verse 10. He says in verse 10 of Hebrews 11, who is on the computer, we're in verse 9, 10. For he looked for a city, a city, a police. He looked for a people which had foundations whose builder and maker is God. Next verse, 11. Through faith also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. She judged him faithful who had promised. Now he mentioned Sarah and we will see the significance of Sarah in a bit. Then verse 13 of Hebrews chapter 11. Please, I beg you pay attention. Hebrews chapter 11. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off. And were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. They have not seen the promise, but they saw the promises afar off. And they confess that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Now, strangers and pilgrims will be people that are different from what is obtained. They are unique. They are different. They are not common. They are not like others. They are strangers and they are pilgrims. Look at verse 16 of Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews 11 from verse 16 to 19. But now, they desire a better country. That is unheavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God. For he had prepared for them a city, a police, a people. Next verse. 17. By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises, offered up his only. If your Bible is mine, I will underline his only begotten son. Offered up. His only begotten son. Next verse. Mm -mm. Of whom it was said that in Isaac, not Isaac, in Isaac shall thy seed be called. 
Not Isaac, but in Isaac. Next verse. Next verse. Accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead. From whence also he received him in a figure. Well, Isaac didn't die. So it couldn't, be, it couldn't have been Isaac that was received in a figure. Also take note of the narrative. His only begotten son. Isaac was not the only son of Abraham. And take note of the word begotten. Where John God for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Same words that the writer of John used. The writer of Hebrews is using gotten from Genesis. Now, who did he receive in a figure? Isaac or Christ? Christ. Isaac didn't die so Abraham couldn't have received, received him. Abraham took Isaac to Mount Moriah as a physical representation of what God did for us in Christ. Now, so you can see that as Paul says in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 32, look at how Paul, you know, gives us this concerning the Israel of God. 1 Corinthians 10 32, give none offense neither to the Jews nor to the Gentiles nor to the church of God. The church of God is not in the flesh. The church of God is in the spirit. So Paul is saying that when Abraham was calling the things that be not as though they were, he was like God. Because his body was dead, but he was persuaded. He was strong in faith. He was giving glory to God. He was fully persuaded that faithful is he that has promised who was able also to perform. So he began to call the things that be not as though they were. Sarah's womb was completely gone. But a physical miracle took place, no doubt. But he is saying, it is like God. Abraham, therefore, becomes a representative in himself, like God. The promise of the Spirit. Isaac also becomes a representation. There was Ishmael, don't forget, the flesh. There was Isaac, the Spirit. Both of them were allegories or a figure of speech. Then he says, just the same way we believe that God shall raise Jesus from the dead who was, who was offered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. That's what Paul has just done. He took the Abraham and Isaac story to talk about God and Christ and the believer. So in Galatians chapter 3 verse number 8, put it up for me. Galatians 3 verse 8, it says, And the scripture foreseeing that God will justify the hidden through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. Well, I have told you, it, nobody preached the gospel to Abraham. It was Abraham that was preaching the gospel with, with the demonstration of, of Isaac on the way to Mount Moriah. Okay? Because Abraham was a Nabi, a prophet. And what did the prophets of the, of, of the Old Testament do? They foresaw. And based on what they foresaw, they foretold. They spoke. So Abraham being a prophet foresaw what God will do and gave it verbalization. Abraham preached the gospel. That is the word Pro you are jealizo. Pro you are jealizo. He has preached the gospel before. He announced the gospel. In this shall all nations of the earth be blessed. Now what's Paul doing? Bringing all of this narration. Paul is such a convincing speaker. He is putting his facts in a way you cannot argue. In this shall all nations be blessed. In thee how? In Abraham's faith. The blessing will be because Abraham believes. So Abraham sets a pattern. Of how the blessing will get to other people. By faith. By faith. Faith in the coming Messiah. So indeed there is not 
in the person of Abraham, but using Abraham as a prefiguring. What you have believed in this pattern that you have expressed shall all nations of the earth be blessed. So Abraham becomes a father. Pay attention. In that act of all who believe. So what is Paul communicating? Brother Paul now throws in the great argument in Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 to 14. Galatians chapter 3 verse number 13 to verse number 14. Pay attention. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. Be made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Next verse. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Then he now brings in that key element that he was talking about. And I'm talking about brother Paul here. In that Galatians chapter 3 verse 16. Pay attention to verse 16 and 17. Now to Abraham and his seed where the promise is made. He saith not unto seeds as of many but as of one. And to thy seed which is Christ. Next verse. Oh I love this. And this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ the law which was 430 years after cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect now Paul was very correct because he used the word seed not seeds as of many but in thy seed as of one the word zira in the Hebrew and the word sperma in the Greek. His seed, not as many, but his seed as of one. How did Paul get that narrative? Abraham had Ishmael and then he had Isaac. God speaking in Genesis 22 said, Take thy son, thine only son, as if there was no Ishmael. That's a language of the spirit. Take thy son, thine only son. And then he said that that seed that was spoken of in Genesis chapter 12. And Genesis chapter 15. Was just one seed. One seed. The Jews understood that because there was Ishmael. And they were aware of Ishmael. So when they had thine only son, the Jews in that audience knew that this is the Messiah that is being spoken about. Now, so if it's many, the Jews know that it has to include Ishmael and others. But if it is one, then it has to be Isaac. And said, you know well that Isaac didn't die on Mount Moriah. You know well that Isaac is just prefigured. He represents the gospel. And Paul said, this was done before the law. This was done before the law came. Galatians 3.27, pay attention. Galatians chapter 3 verse number 27. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. Which language is this? Which language is this? As many of you have been baptized into Christ. What language is that? Exodus language. Exodus language. Look at verse 28 now. Pay attention. Verse 28. Verse 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither born nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. You are all one in Christ Jesus. Is which language? Genesis. Genesis 1.28. Male and female created them. And God blessed them. Male and female in Adam. Let us make man in our image. 
and in this man, male and female, for there is neither male or female in Christ, because male and female in Christ. So, male and female is from Genesis 128, because where you have man singularly used in scripture is in Genesis, in Christ. Galatians 3.29, pay attention. Galatians 3.29, and if you be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Chapter 4 verse 1. <clears throat> Galatians 4 verse 1. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differed nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all. Next verse. Next verse, brother. But is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Verse 3. Verse 3. Glory to God. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of this world. Now remember that when the promise came, Abraham's family and descendants still went into Egypt. But there was a promise of deliverance. There was a promise. Because even after God gave the promise to Abraham, the children of Israel still went into bondage. But along with their captivity was a promise of deliverance. And so he says, yes, there was a promise the flesh and the law came before the promise was fulfilled. So the law was an interruption of the promise of God in Christ. Then he now used the same Exodus narrative. Bondage. Bondage is Exodus language. Bondage. Galatians 4.4. 4. Are you in the building? Galatians chapter 4 verse 4. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law. Just like it happened to Moses. Fullness of time. Fullness of time. Moses, 40 years in the house of Pharaoh. Fullness of time. 40 years in the wilderness. Fullness of time. Burning bush. I will turn aside and see this great side. Pull off your shoes. For the ground where you stand is holy ground. Go and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Fullness of time. Who will I say sent me? God in his mercy. Told him, all right. I don't have a name, but since you human beings require names, go tell him I am that I am. That's not a name. Why haven't any of you named your child I am? I am, come. Because I am is not a name. But anyway, the fullness of time. Verse 5. Galatians 4.5. To redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoptions of sons. To redeem them, which book is redeem? Exodus language. That's the word apolotrosis. To redeem. Okay? Verse 5. Verse number 5. To redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the euthusia of sons. Euthusia, which is adoption. Adoption of sons. Verse 6 and 7 of that chapter. And because you are sons, God had set forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba Father. Verse 7. Oh, glory to God. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, an heir of God through Christ. So Paul's argument is direct. The law came after the promise of God was given. 
So what is this particular nation? Because that's what we're examining in that nation. Don't forget, this nation have God in Christ. Number two, this nation have the law through faith in Christ or faith in the Messiah. Number three, this nation have a circumcision in the heart. Then he says, Isaac is the one who was the Utusia, means to be seen and placed as a son. Adoption. Utusia, to be seen and placed as a son. Note that. Question. Who came first? Isaac or Ishmael? Yeah? Ishmael. Who is the son? Isaac. So Isaac, therefore, is an adoption. Isaac, therefore, is an adoption. Because God takes us from the world into Christ, from sin into the spirit. That is adoption. Stop thinking of adoption from your ministry of health. We are using Bible adoption, the word utusia, which means to be placed and to be seen as a son. It's not to go to an orphanage and carry children. No, that's not Bible adoption. That's your ministry of health. That's your secular English. Bible adoption is placement. To be seen as a son. I've taught that extensively. And now are we the sons of God. Romans chapter 8 verse 14. Because God said he will live in. So take note of that for personal study. Romans chapter 8 verse 14 to 17. <clears throat> so he walks his narrative around Jesus. Brother Paul. He says the seed is Christ. Now we need to look at something about Abraham shortly. You know, when you get to the kingdom as well, you remember in 1 Samuel, when Israel said they wanted a king, and Samuel said, why do you want a king? They said like all the world, they have a government. They have a government. The world has a government. We want our own government. All right, Samuel, give them a king. Watch this. And Samuel looked for Saul, but notice what the Lord said to Samuel. They have not rejected you. They have rejected me from being their king. How is God your king was their reasoning when he has no palace? <laughs> that was their mentality. How can God say he is our king and there is no palace to go and carry a see the king? There's no palace to go and see the king. No. We want a physical king like other nations. A king we can see who can see us. That's what Israel wanted. We want a king. And God was introducing to Israel, look, I want to make you guys a kingdom of priests and kings. All of you kings. All of you priests. And I, your God, I relate with you spiritually. They say, no, we don't want a spiritual kingdom. We want a physical kingdom. And we want a king that we can go to physically and talk to. God said, okay, Samuel, they have not rejected you. It's me they have rejected. Again, those languages are figurative because the kingship of God is in his spirit. The kingship of God is in his spirit. But they wanted what the world wanted and so Saul came and allowed them to have the arm of flesh. David King came and he said, David have I chosen now, before you get lost, before you get lost in the narratives and begin to say you are Davidic in your heart, 
The Davidic anointing. Have you heard of that before? The Davidic anointing. The Davidic blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Very deep, bro. Very deep. <laughs> David said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand. Sit, 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 sit. That's the way it is. Until I make your enemies your footstool. David is saying, I am not the king. I have a king. Who is our king? The Lord said to my Lord, there is a coming king. Don't forget, David is also a prophet like Abraham. He's prophesying. There is a coming king. So now God restores his plan, not through Saul, but through David by prophecy. God's plan is being restored. They have rejected God, but God is restoring his plan, not through Saul, but through David but via prophecy. He calls God his shepherd. David now begins to prophesy, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The moment you acknowledge that there's a shepherd over you, it means you have admitted that you are a sheep. He means you have admitted that you're not the king. There is a king over you. The king called God or Yahweh. So the plan is renewed and restored again. And all of this is worked around Christ. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down. He maketh me to lie down. I don't lie down until he maketh me to lie down. In green pastures, he leads me. He, 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 my shepherd, my king. He leads me beside still waters. I don't have the final say over Israel. He leads me. Yet in that prophecy of the shepherd, he is unveiling the office of the king which is Yahweh Elohim in the person of Christ so there's a restoration of that plan walked around the person of Christ Jesus comes again you guys alright you all have PhD in theology you are the custodians of the Torah you are the fathers the big boys among the Jews all of you are learned you're all graduates of seminary. Seminary. Shamba calls it cemetery. Seminary. He said he calls it cemetery because a lot of people go there and their dreams and visions are buried there. So he calls it cemetery. That's R.W. Blue Shamba. Okay. <laughs> I used to listen to Shamba a lot. So, so, <laughs> so now he's addressing these guys who are PhD in theology. The Christ. Theologian. Jewish fathers, Pharisees and Sadducees, too far to see and too sad to see, you see, the Christ, the Christ, you know the Christ, okay, the Christ, whose son is he? They said, David, David, David. They are theologians. David. Thumbs up. If he is the son of David, hmm? why does David in spirit call him Lord? They say, let's go home. <laughs> Forget this man. Let's go home. <laughs> let's go home. <laughs> I love Jesus. David in spirit calls him pneumaticus. He calls him Lord. David said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. When the prophet said to David, you cannot build God a house because your hands are filled with blood. And a lot of preachers preach all kinds of things from there that does not make Bible sense. Ah, abortion. 
abortion, any other sin, God can forgive all. Any sin that has to do with blood, 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 blood. Hmm. Even the Lord cannot help it. Wonderful. David, your hands are filled with blood, but I will give you the sure mercies. A tabernacle that will last forever. Yeah. That's, that's the king. The shepherd. The one that restored his soul. The one that he acknowledges. The one that he declares because of his mercies, he will dwell in his house forever. God says, David, I will give you the sure mercies. I will give you my sure mercies. And David is in that house right now. Somebody say, but you know, David did not fulfill his ministry because David was supposed to build a tabernacle. But God said, your hands are full of blood. So David did not build a tabernacle. Hey, on whose throne is Jesus sitting today? The throne of David, not the throne of Solomon. Because that was his destination to prefigure Christ as the king of Israel. And that destination has been fulfilled. Today, Jesus is seated on the throne of David. I'm teaching good here. When you hear God say, David, a man after my heart. It means David is a man who doesn't want to be king. He's not competing with my place. He acknowledges who the king is. So he secures the throne and allows me to occupy the throne. That's a man after my heart. He recognizes Yahweh as the king. Who will not sit on a physical throne, but he will sit in the heart of man. David knew that. That is why David would say, oh God, after his problem with Bathsheba and Uriah, he said, God, come, come. God, come close. Come close. You know, David knew God. How many of you know David knew God? David will tell you, bless, bless the Lord, oh my soul. <laughs> that scripture sounds like a polite scripture. Psalm 103 verse 1. Put it up. Let me show you something. Are you enjoying this tonight? Psalm 103 verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Next verse. Oh, glory to God. Next verse. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Next verse. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Who, this is David. Far before Jesus died, he knew that there is the forgiveness of sins. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities? Who healeth all thy diseases? Next verse. Who redeemed the life with from who redeemed the life from destruction? Who crowned thee with what? Loving his seed, loving kindness and tender mercies. That doesn't sound like a scripture in the Old Testament. David said, God, come close. <laughs> I know I have sinned. But you know what? Against thee and only thee have I sinned. God, if I were to offer sacrifices, I will kill all the rams in Israel and all the cows and offer to you, but I know you. I know you that all those animals they were killing under Moses and all the animals they were killing before me were not your pleasure. You have no pleasure in animal sacrifices. I know you that, that, the, that the pleasure of God is a broken heart and a contrite spirit. You will not resist. What is David saying? I come to you in brokenness. David understood. David knew. David knew he understood. He understood. He is made. Look at the way Paul will put it. You want to see the way Paul will put it? Romans chapter, chapter 1 verse, verse, verse 1, 2, 3 and 4. Put it up. <clears throat> 
Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised our fall, pro, by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. The prophets did not include David. Okay, next. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed. He was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. Next verse. Woo! Next verse. Verse 4. And declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness. How was he declared the son of God? By the resurrection from the dead. So Jesus became a son of God via the instrumentality of resurrection. Thou art my son. This day have I begotten you. You are my son. This day have I begotten you. Hallelujah. And somebody says to me, what does it mean to be broken? It means to have faith in what Christ has done. Brokenness is not crying and falling down and rolling on the floor. Brokenness is faith. You believe in what Christ has done. You have no faith in what you can do. You have no faith in self-righteousness. Your faith is totally in what Christ has done. That's brokenness. Not, not falling down and crying. And wailing. It has no spiritual value. Hallelujah. You know, David himself spoke about the resurrection. He says, you will show me the path of life. You will not suffer than holy one to see corruption. You won't abandon my soul in hell. He is prophesying about Christ in the book of Psalms. David knew that he wasn't the king. He knew who the king was. And all of them kept talking about somebody else. All the prophets, they spoke about somebody else. Only you know, David, I mean, a, a Moses said, A prophet like unto me shall the Lord your God raise unto you of your father. Him shall you hear. And it shall come to pass. Any of you that would not hear that prophet shall be destroyed. They spoke about somebody. All the prophets. All of them. Abel spoke about somebody else. Noah spoke about somebody else. Enoch spoke about somebody else. Abraham spoke about somebody else. Isaac spoke about somebody else. Jacob spoke about somebody else. Joseph spoke about somebody else. Moses, only Jesus spoke about no one but himself. Beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. They all said, somebody is coming. Somebody is coming. Jesus shows up and said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. He talks about nobody, but everybody else talks about him. You search the scriptures. For in them, you think you have eternal life. But they are they which testify of me. Teaching good tonight. Now, so this is the Messiah. This is the Yahweh. What about the father? He is here. The last prophet was John. That's the one that came to prepare ye the way of the Lord. Now, so Paul's arguments are rock solid. This distinct nation will have a king in Christ. This distinct nation. Remember we said all of Jesus' parables were about himself. Did we say that? All of Jesus' parables were about himself. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 16. 2 <clears throat> Corinthians chapter 6 verse 16. And what agreement had the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God had said... I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wow. Who are the them? 
Are they in the Middle East? Are they in Palestine? Or are they somewhere in over the river Jordan? We shall meet over the river Jordan by and by. We shall meet our Savior over there. Who is singing it there? Over there. Over the river Jordan. <laughs> we shall meet over the river Jordan. By and by. Over the river Jordan. We shall meet our Savior over there. Leave that thing. Leave that thing. Leave that thing. Maybe today. What's up, man? Somebody screaming! <laughs> Glory! Over the river Jordan. Where now? Over there, we? We shall meet over there. <laughs> Glory to God. They are not in Jordan. They are not in Palestine. Pastor Philemon is smiling because he sang those songs. <laughs> They are not in Jordan. They are not in Palestine. Where are they? In the spirit. This nation is in the spirit. And you will see it as we proceed. The father is the worker. The father is the pata of this family. We therefore must be must see that. When we hear things like the shepherd, when we hear things like the vine, Jesus used them a lot. Because they are Old Testament narratives. They don't forget the night he was betrayed. Don't forget that night. No matter what, don't forget the night in which he was betrayed. He goes to his disciples, takes off his clothes, takes a towel, begins to wash their feet. And Peter says, don't wash my feet. And Jesus said, if I wash thee not, thou hast no part in me. The word meros, you have no part in me. That is to say, if you are going to have a part in me, you must be washed by the spirit. Peter, if you are going to have a part in me, you must be washed by the spirit. Because it's going to be a spiritual union. And many who get carried away with the, with the narratives take that to start washing people's legs. They they get lost in the narratives, so they take water and washing of leg, and they lose the communication. They lose the communication. Peter said, "Oh Lord." Bath me, wash me everywhere. He still didn't get the message. <laughs> oh Lord, just what? Bath me. That's not the message, Peter. Dummy. That's not the message. Then, secondly, at the table. Are you still here? At the table. Everybody's eating, everybody's feasting at, on the Passover. Then they eat the unliving bread. And Jesus now says, this is my body broken for you. This is my blood. If you were sitting on that table that night, everyone was so quiet that if a pin fell, you would hear the sound because, what are you talking about? This is my blood of the new. A lot of new reality is being introduced. First of all, this blood, this thing we've been drinking, this vine we've been drinking, you call it your blood. This bread they brought from bakery, you call it your body. It didn't stop there. Then you now say, this is your blood of the new testament. We only know of the testament. 
You now say it is shed for many for the remission of sins. We know we've been eating this thing from Exodus and it never washed our sin. Even with the eating, we still offered animal every year to cover our sin. So what are you talking about? You can imagine how dumbfounded they were on that table. He builds Exodus around himself. Jesus takes all of Exodus and builds it around himself. He has built Genesis around himself. He is now building Exodus, the prophets and the Psalms around himself. His water is the spirit. So therefore, the separation of the nation of Israel cannot be natural. It has to be supernatural. Born of the spirit. John chapter 3 verse 3 and John chapter 3 verse 5. Born of the spirit. This nation of Israel will be born of the spirit. Except a man be born again. If I wash thee not, you have no part in me. He's talking about spiritual reality. Now except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Verse 5. Except a man, John 3, 5. Except a man be born of water, that is of the spirit. So now he zeroes in that the birth of this nation called Israel will be a spiritual birth. John chapter 4 verse 23 to 24 their worship will be true worship and it will be in spirit and in truth in reality their worship their worship glory to God John 6 63 the words I speak to you they are spirit and they are life so all along that nation was not the nation that nation was not the nation God has been talking about. In that nation, we had the nation. Inside that nation, we had the nation. Where Jehovah lives. Where Jehovah lives. Glory to God. They have a law of faith. They have the law of Christ. They are circumcised in their heart. And they are distinguished by the spirit. Because Abraham's promissory note was the spirit. That you may receive the promised spirit. That was the promissory note of Abraham, the spirit. That is what will distinguish his seed in the earth. The spirit. What will distinguish that nation on the earth. The spirit. The marker that will make that nation stand out. For you to know that that is the nation he's been talking about. The spirit. So Romans chapter 4 verse 17. Pay attention. Romans chapter 4 verse number 17. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed. Even God who quickened the dead. And called those things which be not as though they were. The word before is like him who did believe. Who quickens the dead. Of course you know that that's God. That's really God is talking about. Who calls the things that be not as though they were. It has to be God. But Abraham did exactly the same thing. Why? Because Abraham is like God. Abraham is prefiguring God. That means Abraham's significance in history was to prefigure God in man as our father. Abraham was to prefigure God in man as our father. So Abraham actually is the name of God. He is the God. He is the father of many nations. 
not by natural descendancy, but by his spirit. So can we say, God in the resurrection is prefigured in Abraham. Can we say that? God in the resurrection is prefigured as Abraham. We will see the significance in a bit. So Abraham went to Mount Moriah to see Abraham. Abraham went to Mount Moriah to see Abraham. Who gave his son, raised him up, and became the lamb. He gave his son, raised him up, and became the lamb. So when his son asked, where is the animal? He said, Jehovah is the one that will do that. I'm just play acting here. Isaac, I'm just play acting here in the mount. The provision shall be seen. I'm just play acting. The real deal, we will see it when we get to the mount. He is the one that will do it. He will give his son and he will raise him up. He is the father of every nation. And just one nation in his son. And that nation is neither Jew nor Gentile. But the church of God. If you believed Moses. You would have believed me. For he wrote of me. Is it getting clear now? Okay. So the separation of this nation is what? The spirit. What separates this nation from natural Israel is the spirit. This nation is not a Jew. This nation is not a Gentile. It's a new kind of humanity that is brought by the spirit of God. A new kind of humanity. 1 John 3, 24. Put it up for me. 1 John chapter 3, verse number 24. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us. How? By the spirit which he had given us. That's how we know. How do I know that God lives in you? By his spirit. So the spirit of God is the DNA of God in the believer. You are not a child of God if you, are, you don't have the spirit. Anyone that doesn't have the spirit of God is none of his. Is that not what Romans chapter 8 said? Romans chapter 8 verse 9. Put it up brother. Romans chapter 8 verse number 9. Glory to God. But you are not in the flesh but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ... He is none of his. Say with me very loud. I have the spirit of Christ. I am born of God. I am that nation. Glory to God. First Peter 2.5 You are built a spiritual house. First Peter 2.5 You are built a spiritual house to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. James chapter 4 verse 5 you can read at home. His spirit Jude verse 19 give me Jude. Jude verse 19 This be they who separate themselves sensual having not the spirit. They don't have the spirit. Because how we know children of God and how we know this nation that God has been talking about is by the Spirit. 
First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 to 15. I have not seen nor ear heard, neither has it occurred to the hearts of men the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. Next verse. Now, we have received. We have received. If you have received, shout, I have received. I have received. No, put that D. I have received. I have received. I have received. I have received. Uh -huh. I have received. I'm not going to receive. It's not send down your power. We pray to your papa. No. It's not spirit of the living God. Fall afresh. She does not grow old. Never grow old. Now we have received. Not the spirit of the world. But the spirit which is of God. Have you received that spirit? Why did you receive that spirit? That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Next verse, next verse, brother, next verse. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man... The man from, from Jordan without Christ. The man from Israel without Christ. The man from Tel Aviv without Christ. The man from Palestine without Christ. The man from Nazareth without Christ. That man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For their foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them. Because they are spiritually discerned. Next verse, next verse, next verse. But he that is spiritual. Who is spiritual here? Born of the spirit. He that has the DNA of God. I'm talking about that unique nation. I'm talking about that peculiar nation. I'm talking about that generation of people. That God has promised from the beginning. But he that is spiritual. Judgeth all things. And he himself is judge of no man. For who had known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the some. Huh? Sumba Baizo. Kabadaga. We have the Sumba Baizo of Christ. The understanding. We have the explanation. Who has that explanation? And that's what we've been working on these few weeks. We have the explanation of Christ. We are of the spirit. This is the resurrection. What we are dealing with here are resurrection realities. Resurrection realities. So Mount Moriah is a representation of the resurrection. Mount Moriah is a representation of the resurrection. The Jireh is Yahweh. He saw he knew. He provided. And he is the provision. He saw. He knew. He provided. And he himself is the provision. So the uniqueness of Israel is not in Abraham. The uniqueness of Israel is in Christ. So God the Father is Abraham really. Did you hear that? God the Father is what? He's Abraham. Christ is the seed. The Isaac. Of Yahweh the Lord. Because he said your seed will govern the nations. Not you. But your seed. Your seed will rule the nations. Not you. But your seed. And God has given all authority to his son. Just like Abraham and his seed. And brother Paul prefigures the same thing. Jesus said. The father handed everything to the son. Christ is the Lord. He is the Yahweh. So what seed? What seed? Genesis chapter 15. 
Let's help Paul out and argue for Paul here. Can we argue for Paul? Huh? Huh? So, did Paul speak down on Israel? Huh? No. Paul affirmed Israel. He affirmed Israel. Jesus affirmed Israel. The Israel of God. The Israel of God. Jesus affirmed the Israel of God. Genesis 15. Now, Abraham, let's look at the issue. Can we look at the issue? Genesis 15 verse 1. Genesis chapter 15 verse number 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision saying, Fear not, Abraham. I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Next verse. And Abraham said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abraham said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed. And lo, one born in my house is mine heir. Verse 4. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir. But he that shall comfort out of thy own bowels shall be thine heir. Again, that's the, fig, the, the prefiguring of something here. Pay attention. Verse 5 and 6. 5 and 6. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed Stars, seed. Stars, seed. So what seed? The word seed there is the word zera in Hebrew, which is sperma in the Greek. It means offspring. Offspring. What is Moses doing to us? So, Moses... In Genesis chapter 1 verse 11, put it up. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind. Whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. The seed will bring forth fruit after his kind. So Moses now prefigures the prototokus. The prototokus. Seed, monogenua. Prototokus, after his kind. So when God said this seed, look at the discourse. The discussion is on a person, one person, and in that discourse, God brings in the stars. That's what Moses is saying. A seed will bring forth after his kind. In other words, in the words of Moses in Genesis 1 11, and in the words of Moses in Genesis chapter 15, it's a nation in a seed. A nation in a seed. That's not natural. That's brother Paul's prototokos. Or John's prototokos. A people. A people. In Genesis chapter 12 verse 3. In this shall all families. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that cursed thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Families. The word mishpacha in the Hebrew. I can spell for you M-I-S-H-P-A-C-H-A. M-I-S-H-P-A-C-H-A. Mispacha, it means a clan. Shall the families of the earth be blessed? 
That means there's coming a day the whole earth will have one family. The whole earth will have one family. And that family is a family of the spirit. Yeah. That family is a family of the spirit. I can see that Abraham must have had a wow experience. Just bringing these narrations together. Just communicating these truths both orally and in reading form. Or maybe those guys on the road to Emmaus, they must have had what they call the aha, aha, the aha moment. As he showed them all, he lifted the veil from off their minds. And they went, oh, really? Really? Beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded. And he was opening these things that we've been studying together here. They were going, wow. Hey, is that what it means? It is this kind of teaching they had for 40 days. Where all the facts were brought together. And their understanding. Boom. Ah. They soon named me the scriptures. Why did God take him to Mount Moriah? This is to affirm the covenant that he will die. He will be raised up and the stars will bring forth. That is the nations. Oh, that's the Christ. And that is the glory. What's the glory? The sufferings of Christ and the glory that will follow. What's the glory that followed? Families in one family. Families of the earth in one family. Woo! That's the glory. Their minds were opened. They were lost thinking as a natural man. He by the spirit opened their minds to see that those words were God's promise. So Paul writes it like this one. One body, neither Jew nor Gentile. One body, one soma, one family, one father over all. So Abraham will be a prefiguring character. He will be a prefiguring character. He is not the real character. He stands there as a prefigure. Just like Melchizedek in Hebrews chapter 7. Melchizedek was a prefigure. That's why he has no father, no mother in the narration. He has no beginning or end. That's a prefigure of Christ. Hebrews 11. He is seeking for a city whose builder and maker is God. He himself was looking for a family whose father is God. Abraham too was looking for that family. He wanted to see that family, that people whose father is God. Now the writer of Hebrew now says, Hebrews 12, 22. Look at what Hebrew, the writer of Hebrews now says, in conclusion of all this narration, but you are come unto Mount Zion. You. You are come unto Mount Zion. Unto the city. The city Abraham looked for. You are come to that city of the living God. And that city is called the heavenly Jerusalem. And in that city, you will find an innumerable company of angels. Next verse. Kabayada. Kabayada. You are come. You are come to the general assembly and church of the firstborn. You have come to the church. The church of the firstborn. Which are written in heaven. They are not going to be written. They are already written in heaven. And that church is sitting here tonight. And to God the judge of all. And to the spirits of just men. Who are made perfected. Next verse. Next verse. And to Jesus. I love that one. 
you have come to Jesus. You have come to Jesus himself, the mediator of the new covenant. And to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. He uses the word general assembly. It's the Greek word phanagusis. Phanagusis. A festival. You are come to a festival. A continual festival. Heavenly city. The blood of Christ. You have come to the ecclesia. The ecclesia of the promises of God in the old covenant. Everything woven around Christ. What makes us see this clearly? The resurrection. The resurrection to us is the game changer. The resurrection shows us everything. The resurrection. The cutting is taken away. Oh. That's the nation. The nation must be separate by the spirit. Not by land. Not by circumcision. Not by geographical territory. God said to Abraham, you know what I am talking about here. Look at the stars. Can you number it? Abraham said, no sir. Abraham, look at the stars. Can you? Abraham said, one, two, three, four. Four. Wait, wait. One, two, three. One, one, one. Two, three, four, five. No. Because while he's counting one, three has appeared where that one is. Can you number the stars? Abraham said, no, sir. So shall thy seed. Remember, one person. Stars. So Christ in the earth was what was prefigured to Abraham. Christ in the earth. Number one marker. Yahweh is Elohim. Number two marker. There's a law for the people of God. Number three, Maka, it's the law, I mean, number two, Maka, it's the law of faith. It's the law of Christ. It's the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Number three, Maka, the circumcision is of the heart. Number four, Maka, the distinction of this nation is by the spirit. Because Abraham's promise was the spirit. His child of the spirit is Isaac, not Ishmael. So Abraham is reckoned for his faith in Isaac, not in other kids, in Isaac. The distinction, therefore, will be the promise of the spirit, not the flesh. So Paul's language was to skip all the bombs of the flesh given to men stiff-necked. He skipped all the bombs of the language that was given to men stiff-necked and unbelieving. Then look at the words of the gospel in the Old Testament. The words of promise. The words of faith. What God will do in man that is found in Christ. That's a promise. A kingdom of priests and a kingdom of kings. Today we're in that Basilia. We're in that reign. We're in that rule. We're in that dominion. They that receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. They reign in life. Glory to God. How do I know a man that is reigning in life? And the work of righteousness shall be peace. A man that is in rulership with righteousness is not terrified. Peace. And the effect of righteousness shall be quietness 
and assurance forever. The effect. The work is peace. Okay? Peace. But the effect that follow a righteous man is quietness and assurance. Kabayada. Ilabada. The work of right. When you have understood righteousness. When you have understood righteousness. You have understood that you have equality with God. When you have understood that you have right standing before God. That God will never see you in any other light other than the, in the light of Christ. That even if God decided not to look at your side for a while and then he turned to look at you, irrespective of you, what he sees is Christ. When you understand that righteousness is standing before God without guilt, condemnation, inferiority, complex, sin, consciousness, cowardice, shame, none of those. The work of that righteousness will be peace. Then while you're enjoying that peace, the effect, the effect that people will feel when they come around you will be quietness and assurance forever. <laughs> so if you come around a believer and he's scared, he's flabbergasted, something has happened to his understanding of righteousness. You need to draw him. Tell him, bro, come. Come back here. Come, open your Bible. Open your Bible. They that receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, they reign over sickness, over disease. They reign over anything Satan can offer. They are in reign. It's like saying this is the regime of Buhari. To reign is a regime. The regime. Under Buhari's regime, these are the things that happened. Because Buhari is in reign. When he speaks, Nigeria must listen. Whether by choice or by force, because there is an enforcement department. They are called the law enforcement officers in the regime of Buhari. This is the reign of Christ. Because he's not in the grave. He rose from the dead. Three, two thousand years ago. When he rose, you rose with him. Now you are in the reign of Christ. You and Christ are reigning together. This is your regime. If sickness is talking too much, quiet. Quiet. But Ayada, it is your regime. You are the one reigning because you have received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. So you reign in life. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Say, I reign in life. Don't your neighbor say, hey neighbor. Stand on your feet. If your neighbor is sitting there, tell him, stand up, stand up. If you need a miracle, I give you one. Stand on your feet. Tell your neighbor, hey neighbor. The work of righteousness. Is peace. Say neighbor. The effect. Of righteousness. Is quietness. And assurance. Forever. <laughs> Glory. Tell your neighbor. Hey neighbor. We preach this gospel this year without apology. Tell your neighbor, hey neighbor, this year is walk, 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 walk. Are you ready to walk? I am sold out. Fire in my bones. We preach this gospel from community to community, city to city, nation to nation, all over the continent. Say, hey neighbor, you are standing beside a city. I am a city. Look at me. Look at me, neighbor. I am a city. Look at me very well. Out of me, multitudes will be born into the kingdom. 
Say, say, neighbor, you are not looking at one man. You are looking at nations. Say, by my hand, the gospel will be preached. Nations will come to the light. I will raise disciples. The influence of the word of God through me will spread all over this nation. I didn't hear a powerful amen. Kabayada. Say, hey neighbor, you better stand and be counted. Stand and be counted. Throughout this year, no distraction. No distraction. Eyes on the ball. Stay focused. We win souls. We raise disciples. We build campuses. We establish house churches. We dismantle the kingdom of darkness. Through the gospel of light. Tell your neighbor, hey neighbor. I'm committed. I am sold out. This is the mission. This is why I live. I live to serve my generation with the purpose of God. Say, hey neighbor, I'm going to pray for you now. So you'll be energized. I'm going to make power available on your behalf. So you stay focused. You stay diligent. You stay fired up through the course of the year. Grab your neighbor. Liba dagadagash. Legro da zaka lambre gadenge gelenemo shakaya naha. Pray, 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 pray. Zagondo golo do boja kala. Lebra da gaga galada bo zokolo do brena katona galaya. Legro do sokolo do bobo. Jakala da babra gadisa kale na bo shakata. I press forward towards the mark of the high calling of God in Christ. We press forward towards the mark of the high calling of God in Christ. Legra do shokolo do bo sata. We walk worthy of the Lord. Unto all pleasing. We are fruitful unto every good will. We are filled with the knowledge of his will. In all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Legra da sukabarakatina. You are kept by the power of God. You are preserved by Christ. You are preserved by the Holy Ghost. Ligarato ni katata. Again, lady bajakayana. Angalada basokele de bosha. La grada sabari ketene kele nema shokata na kata. Egele de bosokolo de boskata. La grada sekele mananga. Agaba yogo lodo boze keli da barakato na kalida. Angele de boshaka. Agabato de. Agabato de. Agabato de. Agabato de. Agabato de. Agabato de. Agabato de, 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 angranda songranana, angalere bo shaka kate, agabato nega, agabato nega, angalere bo shaka, angalita mara, angarana ba sondoga, angabire kete ne, angalada ba shaka ba, angalere bo satala ba. You are kept by the power of God. You are sustained by Christ. Angalere so kalada ba, angalere bo shaka. Agaliba so colorable, the zeal of God's house has consumed you. Agaba shikalaba, you're filled with the fruits of righteousness by Christ Jesus. Legradaba shota, agaba rakatina kaya, you're strengthened with might by the spirit in the inner man. You're strengthened with might by the spirit in the inner man. You're strengthened with might by the spirit in the inner man. You're strengthened with might by the spirit in the inner man. Legatuyana, legatuyana. I thank Christ Jesus, my Lord, who has counted you faithful, putting you in the ministry. The honor of God is upon your life to preach the gospel in and out of season, to declare the word of the Lord. I decree that with great power you give witness to the resurrection and great grace. Jakata, elebo jakata, elebo jakata, elebo jakata, elebo jakata, elebo jakata, elebo jakata, angere rebo sotate, agabato neke, agabato neke, agabato neke, agabato neke, agabato neke, ayana gasaya, angere rebo shatete, agabato nea, agabato nea, agabato nea, agabato nea, agabato nea, aleba sotege, agambregato. Agabare ke tete, agamba shonga, agamba shonga.
Shanga, Agaba Shanga, Ele Shakaya, Angerere Sotala, Egelere Boshate. You preach the word. You stand firm in the gospel. You declare the word of God, not with enticing words of men's wisdom, but in the demonstration, in the apodexis, in the flashing of light on the surface that men that sit in darkness will see great light. You are a city set on a hill that cannot be hid. You are kept. You are preserved. You are preserved. You are sustained by the power of God against Shotana. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask or think according to the power. There is a working of God's mighty power on your inside. You make manifest the riches of Christ. You make manifest the treasures of God. Agayana, 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 Ela Shakayadaba. Pray, 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 pray. Leave your neighbor and pray for another neighbor. Walk away from your seat. Look for somebody else. Liana, na, na. Pray for your neighbor. You are a battle axe. You are a weapon of war. You are a new sharp threshing instrument. You are a city taker. You are a community shaker. You are a nation shaker. Leka sopere ketita. Agarada sokele reba joka. Lebra zokoro dobo sendele bo shata. Egele rebo zakale reba shagaya. Agambara katona kata. Agambara katona keleya. Agalana majoko lobo sotia. Open your mouth. Lengandora. 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 Raka sopere ketete. All over the nations, the nations are opened. The nations are opened. Legrata sokele rebasha. Leonana. Now begin to pray for nations. Pray for Africa. Pray for Nigeria. Pray for Ghana. As the nations are coming to your mind, begin to declare over those nations. Men are rising. Men are rising. Men are rising that will preach the gospel. That will shut down falsehood all over Africa. Angelebo Shatata. West Africa. Legarato Sekeyaba. East Africa. Lagandoga Shakayada. South Africa. Legrata Sekelebo Shata. North Africa. North Central Africa. We pull down every stronghold in the minds of men. We take authority over the Tuhungas of darkness. The God of this world, your holes are broken. We ask that the Lord of the harvest will push out laborers all over Africa. The nations in Africa, that men and women all over Africa will see the light, will come to the light, will embrace the light. Agashontaga, Agashontaga, Agelerebo Sata. Religion is collapsing. Idol worship is collapsing. Native doctors are collapsing. The gospel of Christ is rising higher. The hearts of men are embracing the gospel. All men seek Christ. They are coming. They are coming from the north. They are coming from the south. They are coming from the west. They are coming from the east. They are coming. Acts of me, the nations, and I will give you the uttermost part of the earth for your possession. Like a sumara, a the sick, we receive the nations. Agarata Sikaya, Angele Rebo Shata, Agarata Tata, Agarata Tata, all over Africa. Open your mouth and pray. Ange Sondaya, Ange Sondaya, pray, pray, pray. That men who sit in darkness will see great light. Pray for Europe, all over Europe. United Kingdom, the West, the Southern Europe, Eastern Europe, Central Europe, Northern Europe, that God is raising men through the gospel. Men are rising, saviors are rising in all over Europe. The gospel is rising, men are coming to the truth. Falsehood is giving way. There is an awakening, there is a steering, there is an awakening, there is a steering. Laborers all over Europe, all over the UK. We command laborers in the south, in the west, in 
the east, in the north. Agashanta, 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 Ale Tata, Ale Tata, Ale Tata, Ale Tata, Ale Tata, Ale Tata, all over Europe. Angele Rebo Satata, Agele Taya, Agele Taya, the earth is the Lord's. Angele Re Sokayata, for God so loved the world. Angele the Sokataya, Angele Bo Shata, Agele the Saya, an army of laborers. The harvest is ripe, an army of laborers. Agele Rebo Shata, let's pray for the Americas, the Americas, all Ama Shotatata, West, North, South, Central, Eastern, all over America. Age Shata Teta, Canada, Angele Rebo Satata, Agele Rebo Shata, all the islands in America, Jamaica, and all the islands, the gospel permeates, men are coming to the truth, the gospel penetrates every man's world, there are laborers, the harvest, the harvest, we pull in the harvest, we put in the sickle, we pull men, we pull women, Angele Rebo Shata, Agara Tatea, 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 Pray! Zakonda Gaza, all of the Americas, the gospel of Christ, the gospel of Christ penetrates every nook and corner of the Americas. Men are coming to the truth. Oh, Gaba Shokalaraba, Engelerebo Sata, false religion is collapsing, deception is collapsing, the God of Mammon is collapsing, the gospel of Christ is rising more than ever before. Platforms are opening, a great and effectual door against Sutatata in the Americas, a great and effectual door against Tobilata, Engelerebo Satata in the Caribbean, the gospel penetrates against Shutalaba, all the nations in the Caribbean. The gospel, the light of Christ is shining all over Brazil. Agasso Katata, all the Spanish speaking nations. The gospel of Christ. Agara Tatata, Agara Tatata, Puerto Rico, Lagos Satata, Agalana Gayada, Agalana Gayada, Agalana Gayada, Agalana Gayada, Agalana Gayada. Now pray for Asia, Asia, all over Asia. Angele Sotatata, Angele Sotatata, Angele Sotatata, the gospel of Christ uh, is preached uh, all over Asia. Men are coming. Women are coming. Agele tete, agele tete, agele tete, agele tete, agele tete. We push our laborers, uh, Lord of the harvest, laborers uh, all over Asia. The gospel is preached. Uh, men are coming. Women are coming all over the world. Uh, the knowledge of the glory of the Lord uh, as the water covers the sea. Again satire, again satire, again satire. Pray for Asia. The gospel. Uh, in Japan, in China, in India, Agelabasha, Malaysia, Agaradasaya, Agaradasaya, Singapore, the gospel of Christ, Agaratata, 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 pray for the Middle East, Agasenga, 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 pray, 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 pray. Here, all over the Middle East, nations that are known and nations that are not known, laborers, Lord of the harvest, Lord of the harvest, Lord of the harvest, Legaratatetete, Legaratetetete, Legaratetetete, Lord of the harvest, La Grandange Lerebo Satata. Now lay hands on yourself. Begin to pray for yourself. Begin to pray for yourself. That the gospel through you will flourish. That the gospel through you will prosper. Beginning from Uyo. Beginning from Akwaibon. You will shine the light. In your Jerusalem. Men will hear the gospel. Men will hear your voice. They will hear the message. Disciples are raised across the border. Pray for Kwaibon. Disciples are raised by you. La Granta Ketambara, Angala Tobete, Angala Tobete, Angala Tobete, Angala Tobete, Angala Tobete, Angala Tobete, Angala Tobete. Use me, Lord. 
Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Neano na sakata. I'm a city set on a hill. I shine your light in my city. I shine your light in my community. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Zakato geleda bada. Zakato begada. Gagara to begelede. Agara na mara ketete. Agara na mara ketete tete. Agara na mane ketebe de gea. Use me, Lord. Throughout this year, your body is held. No sickness, no disease. I am bought with a price. Therefore, I glorify God in my body. I glorify God in my spirit. My body cooperates with the word of God. My body cooperates with the healing power of God. The power of God is at work in my body. The power that raised Christ from the dead. The exceeding greatness of his power. Agashota la masata. Agashota la namasata. Hey! Praise your Father. Lift your hands and begin to give him praise. Give him praise. See how the nations are waiting. Give him praise. Thank you, Father. Praise your Father. Praise your Father. In the name of Jesus. If you believe it is done, can I have that? Amen. Amen. Can we celebrate answers? Is that how you celebrate the answers? All over the nations of the earth. All over the nations of the world. Glory! Whoa! The nations are coming. The nations are coming to the brightness of the light. Yeah, 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 yeah. They are coming. They are coming. They are coming. They are coming. The nations are coming. We receive them as harvest. We receive them as harvest. In the name of Jesus. Say, Lord, my hands are ready to bring in the harvest. Say it again, Lord, my hands are ready to bring in the harvest, to raise disciples, to build strong local churches. Through me, men will be established. Churches will be built. Believers will be edified. Disciples are raised all over the world. Through me, in Jesus' name. I didn't hear a good amen. Now, remember, from Monday, is we're going out to the field. From Monday next week, is practicals. All of us will hit the streets and begin to bring in the harvest. Prayer without going out is shooting an arrow nowhere. When you pray, you have released the arrow. When you now go to evangelize, you direct the arrow to the target. It's not enough to pray. It's not enough to study. You must channel the study and the prayer to a target. Say, I hear you. It's not just you all over the world. Wherever there's power city global, that's what we're doing the whole of next week. So the whole of next week, we're going to have early morning Bible study. Early morning for two, three hours. You go to work. Then in the evening by five, we assemble in different communities and shine the light. I didn't hear your amen. Are you ready? Kabayada. Bruda Gaga. Ilajaga. Manajaga. Shiragadas. Kebodagas. That's how it's happening in the whole of next week. I didn't hear your amen. The coordinators in your campuses all over the place will tell you the plan for next week. In the various campuses all over the world. It's going to be a very brutal week.
Let me thank all of you partners that are responding to our partnership call. I know by now everybody has received their invitation, their you know, uh, uh, acceptance in the WhatsApp group. I know by now you all have. But if for any reason you are yet to be accepted or even you've not gotten any response, then call the numbers I called out yesterday or shoot a mail to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. Again, put in a reminder that you're yet to see uh, your own information. Then finally, I want to also announce that uh, all of you that made your commitments, you will begin to hear from me steadily on what the plan is. But I want to thank everybody that has made a commitment to partner. And those that are yet to make the commitment to partner, as God steers you up, shoot a mail, reach out to us. This year, we need more people. We need much more money to do many more, many more things for the glory of Jesus. And it's an honor to give God our resources for the advancement of his kingdom. We are men of eternal value. And anything that is eternity is priority in our lives. I didn't hear a powerful amen. amen. All right, grab your honor offerings. Let's give tonight. Online, the banking details are scrolling. Uh, television, the banking details are scrolling. Let's give in joy. Let's give in faith. And the, the online community for next week, I will give you an announcement on Sunday on how to do your own evangelism. If you're in a place where there's no power city, I'll give you details on Sunday. If you're in a place where there's no power city at all, I will give you instructions on what to do next week where you are. Nobody will be left out. No stone will be left unturned. I didn't hear a good amen. amen. Lift up your honor offerings. Father, we give in faith. We give with joy. And we thank you for the privilege of giving tonight. Our hearts are filled with gratitude for the blessing we have in the knowledge of Christ. Our offerings are a sweet smell before you. And we rejoice in Jesus' name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Tomorrow the doors are open at 5.30 again. We're going to be teaching in continuation of the in Christ realities. We're teaching right till Sunday. It's from Monday action begins. Online we're signing you off. We love you guys. Looking forward to hear from you more. And to see all of you tomorrow 6 p.m. GMT plus one. As we go live bringing you the service. Can I have a good amen? All right, everybody. We trust that you have been blessed by this message. To order the complete series of this message and all the messages by Dr. Abel Daminer, please call plus 234-806-800-9939 or email powercityoffice at gmail.com.